Um, hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the Psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer about the Psalms. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Fortunately, this Psalm is number three in both translations, so let's take a look at what it says. A Psalm of David when he fled from the face of his son Absalom. Absalom was the third son of David, who was sent into exile for three years because he murdered his half-brother Ammon. When he came back out of exile, he tried to win the people over to support him, and managed to make a bunch of powerful allies, then openly rebelled. King David led a retreat from Jerusalem before defeating Absalom's forces in the wood of Ephraim. So, when this psalm says that it's about David when he fled from Absalom, this means the context is during his retreat from Jerusalem, However, Psalm 3 can be used by many people in many different times and places. Why, O Lord, are they multiplied that afflict me? Many are they who rise up against me. Very often, evildoers outnumber the faithful and seem at first to have the upper hand. We may not always know the reason for this, but God is the right person to ask about it. Many say to my soul, there is no salvation for him and his God. Far too many people use misfortune to try to establish the uselessness of God. It seems David was hearing some nasty rumors at this time. But thou, O Lord, art my protector, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. The reality is that misfortune just happens sometimes. It doesn't show that God has abandoned us. In fact, there are times when God can use highly lopsided odds to prove his own great power. As long as God loves us, we can trust him to make things work out for good. I have cried to the Lord with my voice, and he hath heard me from his holy hill. God hears all of our prayers, even if we don't see immediate results, and we might not recognize the gifts of God, even if they're right in front of us, like in the movie It's a Wonderful Life. I have slept and taken my rest, and I have risen up, because the Lord hath protected me. The only reason that we get to wake up in the morning is that God gives us a certain amount of protection. In David's case, God must have guarded him against his enemies while he was resting. I will not fear thousands of the people surrounding me. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. Even whole armies can't win against the power of God or do any harm to a person who God is protecting. For thou hast struck all them who are my adversaries without cause. Thou hast broken the teeth of sinners. When people attack others for no reason, God often allows unfortunate things to happen to them, though again, it may not be obvious to us what those misfortunes are. Broken the teeth refers to taking away their power to cause harm, another thing that God is free to do. Salvation is of the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. No matter how many powerful people you may have on your side, it's ultimately God who decides the winner, and the winner is always the person who sides with God because... They're the ones who are saved. God blesses those who do his will. As you can see, this is a psalm about a person surrounded by large numbers of enemies, attacking him for no good reason. He longs to know the reason for it all, but ultimately places his trust in God where it belongs, because he knows that God is far greater than any number of human beings. Uh, that's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.